The Patriots have been waiting a long time for this one to see those Colts again. TGIF, everybody, thanks for starting your weekend with us alongside Skip Bayless. I'm Molly Karam here in studio. Stephen A. joining us from Miami. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? How's our man Dwayne Wade doing down there in Miami? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Well, I'll give you that answer this afternoon. I don't know that as of yet. Oh, I you're going to see him today. Oh, I thought it was yesterday. Okay, I got it. But you are going to interview him? We'll see him today. Good. All right. Yes, I am. Onward and upward. All right, we got a lot to get into, right. fellas. Let's, Let's work. Let's it roll. is a rematch of the AFC Championship game, also known as the Deflate Gate game, where the Patriots beat the Colts 45-7. to The Pats are now 4-0, including playoffs against the Colts since Andrew Luck entered the NFL in 2012. Colts owner Jim Irsay says he expects Luck to play on Sunday. Now, according to odds makers, New England opened as a six-and-a-half point favorite, and that line has gone up to 10 points. Stephen A., what are you expecting on Sunday night? Well, I expect, uh, uh, you know, something close to a blowout, maybe not a complete blowout. I think the New England Patriots ultimately will pull away, and I think they're going to win this game by a score uh, along the lines of 37 to 21, maybe 37 to 23. But I think they're going to put up a bunch of points. Um, I think they're going to go at uh, the Indianapolis Colts. I think we're going to see Brady's A game. Um, I think the Indianapolis Colts will definitely try to respond, but I don't think they're going to be nearly as effective. I think retribution kicks in here. There's no doubt in my mind they can downplay it all they want to but Tom Brady is not going to just let this shove aside this is not just another game to him and certainly it's not about targeting the Indianapolis Colts from the perspective of I'm quite sure they didn't mean to target Tom Brady per se they were just pointing out something that they believed to be unfair when it came to Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots but nevertheless the residue effect of it all was an off season in which Tom Brady the reigning defending Super Bowl champion quarterback, a four-time Super Bowl champion, a future first ballot Hall of Famer, has spent the entire offseason as a Super Bowl champion having to talk about deflated footballs. Barely anybody has been really focused on the fact that this guy is walking around as the champion. Instead, he's walking around as the guy who was, def who was suspended for four games by Raj Goodell in the National Football League, ultimately appealed that suspension, got it essentially overturned by a federal judge that's the Tom Brady that we've been talking about for far too long since that game in February as opposed to the reigning defending Super Bowl champion that he is I think that that has annoyed him I think that he's been waiting for this game and I think that everybody else in the nation has been waiting for this game as well I expect New England to rally around him and to pretty much have their way if the Indianapolis Colts are able to engage in some kind of ball control where somebody like Frank Gould who had absolutely nothing to do with any of this goes out there and plays lights out and assist in moving the chains then that will help Indianapolis because they're going to keep the ball out of Tom Brady's hands to some degree. But it won't be uh, something that can happen throughout the game. I think Tom Brady touches the football just as much as he needs to, and I think New England pulls away somewhere along the lines, like I said, 37-21 and 37-23. But it'll be by at least 14 points. Either 21 or 23. That's interesting. So you think the Colts might have a little better game than you think they might actually get from 21 up to 23. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. <right>. Maybe. <laughs> Give well, or take you know, two points, but that's about it. They're losing by at least 14 points. Okay. The, the case you're making is for stronger than 14 points. So I must tell you, I'm very surprised by your score. You're, you're making a 48 to 14 kind of case for Tom Brady and company for all the reasons we all know. Is that fair to say? No, I, I, don't, I don't look at it that way because I think about a guy like a Frank Gore. You know, if he's able to run the football effectively, then you're okay. going to get your hands on a ball only but so much. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. He'll be able to chew up some of the clock so Indy, Indy, uh, Patriots won't have okay. the ball as much. All right. Look, everything about this game screams revenge blowout. Everything about it. I can make no case for the Colts right now. I, Stephen A., you, you talked about Tom Brady bringing his A-plus game or his A-game. It's going to be A-plus and I'm told by people close to him, 
he, he is out of his mind for this game. Like, like this is it for him. This is Super Bowl-esque for Tom Brady because clearly he wants to take it out. He wants to deflate the Indianapolis Colts just the way he's tried to deflate every team on this schedule. And you know and I know if, if the Patriots quickly get the upper hand, there will be no taking foot off gas in this game. If they can score 60, they will try to score 60. And by the way, I, I want to make this clear to everybody. I hope they score 60. I want to see 60 to nothing. That would make me happy. Happier than maybe even a cowboy victory. That would make 60 wow. to nothing. That's what I want to see when we get back in here on Monday morning. I want to talk about 60 to zero. But I don't think I'm going to be talking about 60 to zero. This is the classic syndrome, I mentioned this earlier this week, of everybody says. I have heard nobody make any case for the home team. This, this isn't in Foxborough now. This is the home team that I remind you just one year ago on Sunday night, or approximately one year ago, was a three and a half point favorite over the same New England Patriots. Three and a half point favorite, and all of a sudden it's, what are, what are we up to now, 10? 10. Okay, now they're 10 point underdogs. So <laughs> we've had a 13 and a half point swing, and yet the Colts went for the throat in the offseason. They, they broke their golden rule, and they went for older players. They signed an Andre Johnson, and you mentioned a Frank Gore, who, by the way, at, at Houston the other night, started to sort of get it. They started to fit in feel like they're in rhythm of the offense, and they both had big contributions in the victory over the Texans, albeit with Matt Hasselbeck, a quarterback, instead of Andrew Luck. But Stephen A., what, what a great spot this is for Andrew Luckless, who's been absolutely luckless against Tom Brady. He's lost four games to Tom Brady by an average score of 48 to 17. Are you kidding me? The, the, the Andrew Locke, first ballot Hall of Famer, has lost four times by an average score, blowout score of 48 to 17. So all of a sudden, he's got a bum shoulder. They say it's not as bad as we thought. It's not sur you know, in need of surgery. I don't even know if he's going to play or not. But if he does, this will be the first game he'll play in his pro career with little to no expectation. Every game, obviously, Andrew Locke has been expected to do a whole lot because he was the first pick in the draft. We get all that. But all of a sudden, nobody will expect anything of an Andrew Luck coming off an injury, missing a couple of games. And I, I would expect him to do pretty well. I, I'm with you. I would expect them to be handing off a lot to a Frank Gore who could control the clock a little bit. Would I be shocked if, if Frank Gore, they, they've gone uh, 39 straight games, have the Colts without a 100-yard rusher. Would I be shocked if Frank Gore broke that streak? No, I wouldn't be shocked at all. Andrew Luck, is, he's a talented kid. Uh, T.Y. Hilton's a little nicked up. He's been limited in practice, but could Kobe Fleener suddenly get back involved against a, a New England defense that I consider pretty good but not great? Sure he could. And the Indianapolis Colts, after a while, they're human. They got pride. They've been humiliated. They've been stepped on. They've been... They've been obliterated by this team four straight times, and, and it's not just Tom Brady. Do you realize that, that the New England Patriots in the last three games against Indy have rushed for an average, an average of 219 yards a game? Are you kidding me? So, so there's humiliation. There's pride at stake here because LeGarrette Blount, I'm going back three games, had 166 and four touchdowns. Then I'm going back to the game in Indy last year. Remember, Jonas Gray came out of nowhere, and he's gone back to nowhere. He had 201 200 yards plus. rushing. Yeah, 201 and four touchdowns. And then LeGarrette Blunt in the AFC uh, title game had 148 yards. This is embarrassing. This is humiliating. And I'm just thinking that on pure pride alone, this is a pro football team. It will rise up and play well and hang in this game. Again, I, I love the Patriots, but, but we haven't even talked about it all week on this show because nobody really cares outside of Patriot Nation. Tom Brady lost his left tackle at Dallas. Mm, Nate Solder. Nate Solder is gone. Tore his biceps tendon. And, and that's, boy, that's, that's trust huge. me, I've, I've had it, and it's, it's a long time, long rehab injury. And God bless him, but all of a sudden, there's no way he's coming back for the rest of this year. So Marcus Cannon is their kind of do-it-all sub-lineman who's under a pretty good contract, actually, and he did a nice job in the second half at Dallas. But really, he's your left tackle going into a, a kind of a grudge match game against a team that has become your, your playoff rival, even though they haven't 
have stood up to their end of the battle. But my point is, that's a big loss for the Patriots. So I could see them having a little bit of a hard time in this game. You've got 37 to 21. I'm going to go 10 points fewer. I'm going to go down to 27 to 21 Patriots. Not picking the Colts. I'm just saying, if, if I'm a bet man, used to be, not anymore, I would take 10 points because the golden rule in any NFL game when you're betting is, you give me double digits, especially for a home team, I'm, I'm going to take that. I, I don't care what 2000-style mission Tom Brady's on. It's just too many points to give a visiting team in a National Football League game between two, you know, the, these, the, I'm not saying the Colts are bad. They're pretty good. They've won three in a row. So I'm sorry. I don't see 10-point spread. Your thoughts? Well, I just see it. I, I see it because, um, I, you know, we've mentioned the past, like you said, how the Patriots have dominated them. Well, what's the biggest reason why? You're looking at the players. I'm looking at the execution. I'm looking at the difference between Bill Belichick and Chuck Pagano. Mm -hmm. We both like Chuck Pagano. We We're incredibly fond of him. Yep. But let's face reality. He's got a lot to prove. Um, and, you know, listen, the last three years, they went from a wild card game to a divisional playoff game to an AFC championship game, and yet when they started out 0-2, he was on a hot seat. Yep. Now, what kind of sense does that make? Yep. You know why it makes sense, Skip Bayless? Because there are a lot of people who believe the Colts win in spite of him, not because of him. We don't know that to be true, um, and I'm certainly not here to try to cast any aspersions. I'm just going on what the aficionados say watching the Indianapolis Colts. So when I take that into consideration, although the New England Patriots lost their left tackle, I under and, that, and they're the visiting team team. I'm still thinking that it's coach Bill Belichick against Chuck Pagano. I'm still thinking that it's a highly motivated Tom Brady. I'm still thinking about his teammates who surround him. This is a guy that sat up there and, and ran for a touchdown in training camp and people were cheering him on for crying out loud, including his own teammates because of how hyped everybody was. Well, if you were hyped for those minimal moments, those insignificant moments as far as I'm concerned, how in God's name are you going to feel come Sunday night when you got to go up against a team deemed responsible for instigating this whole deflate gate mess, which is now spanned 10 months and counting. That's the way that I look at it. And I think that in a game of this magnitude, uh, you know, nationally televised, no doubt against these guys on their home turf. I think it's going to be reminiscent of what New England did against Buffalo those first three quarters in Buffalo before they made a comeback, except in the case of the Indianapolis Colts, there will be no comeback. I think the Patriots are going to win running away with this game. Okay, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm going to stand by the everybody says syndrome. When everybody says what you're saying, everybody is saying that on every show I've turned on. Everybody's written this. It's a done deal. It's a wipeout, revenge wipeout. When everybody says it, the opposite almost always happens. So I think it'll be a close game for three and That's a half fair. quarters. And, and again, th this is the truth. I, I'm actually, I, I'm hoping Andrew Luck plays because I think, obviously rooting for the Patriots, I would be a little more fearful of Matt Hasselbeck right now in a game of this <laughs> magnitude because I think Matt Hasselbeck that's game, ridiculous. No, he would game manage this one. He would scare me because he would go dinks and dunks, lots of handoffs, lots of ball control. He would probably keep them. Look, Andrew Luckless against the, the Patriots, six touchdowns to ten interceptions. He just makes a lot of mistakes. Maybe this game with no pressure, no expectation, maybe he'll play big time. But to me, I would fear Hasselback right now because he's won two straight games over uh, an Andrew Luck, who's, by the way, of, of qualifying quarterbacks in my favorite stat, QBR, he's dead last right now. That's how bad his year has been to date. Well, I got you. Okay, we'll find out. Yes, all eyes will certainly be on Tom Brady. As you mentioned, Nate Solder will not be there, the left tackle. Deion Lewis was limited in practice with an abdominal injury. He's been a bright spot so far in that Pats That's offense. And he was on the Colts for about a week last year before they picked him up. So he's sort of going back to his old team. So speaking of those classic cases of everybody said syndrome.